Okay, welcome back to a new video. Uh, in this short session, we're going to take a look at how you can build really good chains of reasoning. The reasoning is key to getting strong analysis marks in your exams. We're going to take a question which refers to the importance of elasticity of demand and supply and the question of who pays the tax. So here's a past exam question. Explain or analyze how the incidence of a tax depends on the price elasticity of demand and the price elasticity of supply. Taxation, of course, is in the news at the moment. The government is thinking of introducing a new tax on single-use disposable cups used, for example, in the coffee, coffee shop industry, plastic bottles and things, or what have you. And just a few days ago in Singapore, they confirmed that the Singapore government is going to introduce a carbon tax as part of its anti-pollution strategy. So let's look in particular at how you can build chains of reasoning. Examiners' reports make this quite clear. They're looking for students to produce good chains of analytical reasoning to get those top KAA marks. I'm going to build two chains for you in this video. Hopefully this will make sense to you. So the incidence of a tax, again, I'm starting by going back to the question, refers to who eventually pays a tax. Let the examiner know what you mean by the term. An indirect tax on producers... So, for example, the carbon tax on Singapore increases their costs. And this will lead to an inward shift of the supply curve. This will lead as a connective phrase, which helps to build the chain of reasoning. Once the tax is imposed, suppliers may then choose to pass on the tax to consumers by raising their selling price. This depends on the coefficient of price elasticity of demand. When demand is inelastic, in other words, the coefficient is less than one, then most of the tax can be passed on because consumers are less sensitive to price changes. And they give a little numerical exa uh, example. A 20% increase in price might only lead to, a, let's say, a 5% contraction in demand, giving a coefficient of elasticity of 0.25. However, when demand is price elastic, let the examiner know that means a coefficient of more than one, then most of the incidence of a tax going back to the question there, is absorbed by the producer. In this situation, only a small proportion of the tax is paid for by the consumer. Well, there's some chains of reasoning there, and of course we can support the answer with a diagram. So in this situation, I've drawn a perfectly inelastic demand, a vertical demand curve. I've imposed a tax on the supplier. The price has gone up from P1 to P2. It's gone up by the full amount of the tax which is the vertical distance between the two supply curves. Therefore, in this case, the incidence of the tax falls completely on the consumer because elasticity is zero. Let's build a second chain of reasoning. This time, of course, elasticity of supply, a slightly harder part to the question. I go back to my question. The incidence of an indirect tax also depends on the coefficient of price elasticity of supply. When supply is perfectly elastic, i.e. elasticity is infinity, this means that firms can supply an output at constant cost, constant marginal cost. A tax on producers, again, causes an inward shift of the supply curve. In other words, the, the marginal cost curve shifts upwards. But in this situation, all of the tax will be paid for by the consumer. And this is regardless of the coefficient of elasticity of demand. So even if demand is highly elastic, ordinarily, of course, that would mean the producer absorbs the tax. But if supply is perfectly elastic, the consumer pays all of the tax, although there'll be a big fall in the equilibrium quantity bought and sold. And again, here's a diagram to, to show this. I've drawn a perfectly elastic supply curve. It doesn't matter what the elasticity of demand is. All of the tax, in this case, is paid for by the consumer. The producer is able to pass on the full amount of the tax. OK, so there we go. We've just been through a question, hopefully explaining why you need to build good chains of reasoning into your answers to get those top KA marks.